Hey, what's up you guys? It's Annie back with another video helping you to turn your YouTube channel into a success. So one of my friends, Katie, made a video on her channel basically sharing everything she would do if she had to go back to having 100 followers on Instagram, which actually inspired me to make my own version about YouTube. So basically knowing what I now know about growing on YouTube and having a channel on YouTube, everything it took to get me from zero to over 100,000 subscribers, what would I do differently if I had to go back to having 100 subscribers on YouTube trying to grow my channel. So one of the first things I would do is take a hard look at what videos performed best on my channel. Because usually the videos on your channel that have the most views are a pretty good indicator of what types of content your audience wants to see from you. So rather than wasting all the time I did trying to figure out what should I film, what should I talk about, what should I make videos about, I didn't stop to think that the answer was probably right there in front of me. So I would just go over to the video section of my channel, change the filter to most popular, and see what videos on my channel got the most views to use those video topics and those ideas to inspire other videos or make a series out of or make a part two of. And that is exactly what I've done with some of the top performers on my channel is draw inspiration from other videos that got the most amount of views on my channel and make videos inspired by those knowing these are topics that my audience is going to want to see. So now another thing that would be a top top priority if I had to start all over again with my channel is to learn why certain videos on my channel took off and others didn't. There was one time in particular when I was just starting my channel that I got over 15,000 views in like two or three hours on one of my videos where I usually got less than a hundred views in like a month and at the time I just reacted like oh that's cool I got 15,000 views and then just moved on to making the next video. Whereas now on my channel if I have videos that do really really well or even videos that do really really badly, my first instinct and the very first thing I do is I immediately launch into the analytics of that video to figure out why it did super super well or super super badly. Looking for things like how many impressions versus views did the video get? Where did this video get the majority of its views? How well did this video do at holding the viewer's attention? Where did the viewers actually stop watching the video and why did they stop watching the video? Once you start actually looking at that and making notes about what worked, what didn't work, what is helping the video, what is hurting the video, that is when you're going to see your future videos really, really improving and also the overall channel improving. I also would have focused a whole lot more on the buffet versus specialized restaurant method. If I want Mexican food, I'm not going to go to Taco Bell or a buffet where they serve tacos among like 30 other types of food. I'm going to go to an authentic Mexican restaurant that's going to cater to my cravings. And for the longest time, my channel was a buffet. I made videos on healthy snacks ideas, my morning routine, what's on my iPhone, what's in my purse, a day in my life, and so many other videos that had absolutely nothing to do with each other. And I convinced myself that YouTube wasn't working. YouTube wasn't pushing out my videos, YouTube wasn't helping me, and YouTube was the number one reason why my channel wasn't growing. When really the problem was me. The problem was my channel, the problem was my content, my videos. My channel was absolutely incapable of having an authority on YouTube because because there was no one specific audience that my channel was trying to reach. Ranking your videos in search, getting on the recommended page and suggested sections, having YouTube actually pushing out your videos to new viewers, that is only when you begin to actually build your channel around one topic and one main audience and begin to build and gain authority on YouTube. So if I had to go back to when I had about 100 subscribers, I would really, really sit down and hone in and focus on who I want my videos to serve as an audience. Who do I want to have landing on my videos and subscribing to my channel? and watching my videos because the very second I did that and asked myself, what is something I have learned that I want to help other people do and achieve? That is when I began to earn my channel authority on YouTube. That is when YouTube began to really, really learn what is this channel about? Who is this channel targeting as an audience? Who should we have these videos put in front of? Where on YouTube should these videos be ranked and searched for? That is when I began to really, really see my videos absolutely take off on YouTube, gaining tens of thousands of views, getting like hundreds of subscribers every single day, and really, really seeing my channel absolutely 
take off and grow at massive, massive speeds. Another very, very big mistake I made that I wish I could go back and totally reverse is making one-off videos. For so, so long as a newer YouTuber, I had this whole mentality of if I make videos that are super, super trendy and everybody's searching for, everybody is watching, then I'm gonna gain a whole ton of views and subscribers. And then once I have those numbers, I can literally make whatever videos I wanna make because I have that audience, which is such a wrong mentality. I made a video on my iOS 14 customization back when that was trending in September. That video actually hit the trending page and got over like 400,000 views and gained me thousands and thousands of subscribers. But instead of that actually helping me and benefiting my channel like so many other people did, that actually ended up hurting my channel because my channel was about how to grow on YouTube and this video was about iPhones and iOS 14 and technology. So by making that video and having that video blow up on my channel, I was gaining an audience interested in iOS 14 content, not interested in my content. And when you start gaining subscribers on your channel that are not interested in all of your content on your channel, that is going to really, really hurt the overall growth of your videos and your channel because getting your subscribers to watch your videos when you upload them is the number one thing that actually pushes out your videos on YouTube. So by uploading videos that had absolutely nothing to do with my overall channel theme, just because I wanted to have more views and more subscribers was absolutely detrimental to my channel and I did it for way too long. So that is one habit I definitely wish I had never picked up and that I would definitely, definitely not do if I had to start all over again. Taking time to learn how YouTube works probably would have been priority number one if I had to start all over again. It actually wasn't until I had my channel for over a year and had gained thousands of subscribers that I decided to actually take YouTube seriously and try to make something of my channel. That was when I started to research things about YouTube and search up like, how does YouTube work? What is YouTube's algorithm? How do you optimize your videos? How do you get views? How do you gain subscribers? and basically every single other thing about YouTube that I teach you guys in my videos. And when you have that mindset of what can I do to trigger the algorithm, to get the algorithm to pick up my videos and push them out further, that is when you see your videos really, really start to get pushed out and grow on YouTube. Because unfortunately, growing on YouTube has nothing to do with what you want. It's about what your audience wants and what the algorithm wants. Rather than what I was doing at the time, which was basically just uploading videos, crossing my fingers, hoping for the best and being either excited or discouraged when they did really well or when they flopped. Definitely, definitely I owe like 99.9% .9 of my overall channel growth to learning how YouTube works and basically making videos with all of that in mind. If there is one thing anybody watching this video takes away from this video today, it is quality over quantity. It's almost like a drug when you first start your YouTube channel, you're focused on views and subscribers and watch time getting monetized, where basically every single thing you do is focused on making those numbers go up rather than focus on what you actually do to make the numbers go up. As my channel has grown and grown on YouTube, I have learned the crucial, crucial need for quality content. Because if you can't hook your viewers in the first 15 seconds of your video, if you can't get more than 50% of your audience to watch more than half of your video, then that indicates to YouTube and the algorithm that your video's content just isn't up to par, just isn't quality content and not worth pushing pushing out on YouTube. So it is far, far less important how many people watch your video and so much more important how those people actually watching your video react to your video. If you get three people watching more than 57% of your video, that is way, way more powerful than getting a thousand people to watch 30 seconds. So if I had to go back to when I had like 100 or 200 subscribers, I would put so much more time focusing on the structure of my videos, the content of my videos, what I can do to keep people watching longer and spend way less time focused on subscriber counts and how many views I get and how close I am to monetization because quality will always be more important. And one other thing I definitely, definitely should have started way earlier is live streaming. I really don't think I got into live streaming much before I had about like 3,000, 5,000 subscribers and I wish I'd started way, way earlier because I still swear to this day that live streaming on my channel like every other day every three days or so is the
the number one thing responsible for my community. Building a more active audience and having the same people show up on all my videos and comment on my videos, all of that is thanks to live streaming because it is so, so difficult to connect with people on a 10 minute pre-recorded video. Whereas on a live stream, it's kind of like face to face in a way. Your viewers can ask you questions and talk to you, engage with you, get to know you better, kind of feel more connected to you. And that in my opinion is absolutely the number one thing that keeps people coming back time and time again. So I definitely wish I'd started that way, way earlier on in my journey on YouTube. So that you guys is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys really did like this video, definitely let me know because I could totally make this into some kind of a series because there are so many more things I would love to share with you. But I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. Love you all to the moon and back and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!